Hello, my Jason. Uh, what's my anime review for Amanchu? And so there is a sequel coming out, Amanchu Advance, coming out in the spring anime season. And so I decided to, you know, take a look back at the original series that came out in summer 2016. It's based on a 2008 manga, written and illustrated by Kozu uh, Amano, who uh, worked on Aria. Um, that's one of their uh, main uh, works that is probably familiar to a lot of fans out there. Um, as I said before, a sequel is coming out in April, Amatsu Advanced, and the chief director of this is uh, Junichi Saito, who did work on Aria, Princess Tutu, and Sailor Moon, did some work on those uh, series there. The director is Kenichi Kasai, who worked on Wolf Girl and Black Prince, and did some work on Toradora as well, so a uh, lot of pedigree uh, behind this series. However, um, there's some missteps here and there, but I think overall it does uh, work out very well as uh, Iyashiki Yashike uh, anime uh, f and filling up that genre there. I think you know other anime like Flying Witch uh, fills up that genre a lot better than what Amanchi was trying to do. Uh, but if you don't know, uh, Iyashike um, that genre is basically um, it, it roughly translates into like a healing or soothing feel. Uh, like that's sort of what the anime is trying to do. There's nothing too outrageous. Uh, Layback Camp just came out recently. That's a, a that fills up the Ayashike uh, genre as well as a very laid back, you know, no pun intended, uh, sort of feel. And so Manchu is trying to do that as well, based around uh, this story point. Futaba Oyoki. A shy girl meets Hikari Kohinata, an er erratic girl who li loves scuba diving. Together, they join the school's diving club and discover the joys of underwater exploration. And so that's the big crux and the big, um, I guess, sort of driving force uh, for this anime. The relationship between these two girls, Futaba and Hikari, or better known as their nicknames, Teko and Pikari, um, and their love for scuba diving and just diving in general. Uh, Amanchu, I don't know if it actually translates to, you know, diving or any sort of that, whether it's like an Pia sort of thing. I tried to look that up. I uh, couldn't really find any concrete details on that. I know Amanchu, um, that's sort of the name of... Um, I guess their club organization that uh, Pikari's uh, grandmother owns, uh, yeah, that really hosts um, a place where people can just go diving uh, out into the ocean. And so that's the only basis of Amanchu that I could find, at least in the anime and also just outside research as well. And I think too concrete on what it translates to, but um, that's basically the crux of the anime. Um, it, it it has this ups and downs. You know, the pacing is very slow, even for a Yashike uh, anime, uh, because you know the diving aspects of the anime is lax. It's just mostly about the relationship between these two girls, and especially the loneliness of Teko um, coming in from the city into the country and really um, adjusting to a no a new social uh, order and a new. Um, new friends and new experiences that to experience for herself. In the beginning, uh, she's out taking, you know, she's looking at her phone constantly in the first couple episodes, you know, trying to uh, get a message from her friends uh, back home. And you know, the grandmother kind of looks at her condescendingly, you know, just, oh, these damn millennials, you know, paraphrasing there, not exactly what she says. And um, I, I kind of find annoyed by that, mostly because from watching Layback Camp, Layback Camp did a really good job. Um, at showing the, the power of technology and how it can bring people together. And, you know, Amanchu doesn't really bring down technology that much, but it does uh, sort of illustrate uh, just more of this free experience, you know, in some sort of ways. You know, the way uh, Haru frouts in the ocean is sort of the way these characters feel when they're diving into the um, water as well, whether it's in the pool or in the ocean, the Oteko and uh, Picardy have this euphoric sort of feel, and they do illustrate that through the animation as well. And you know, that's really the big thing there, that this diving experience is something new and mysterious. It's very wonderful that um, these experiences that Tycho feels, and you feel that as well. Um, and so that's really how the animation style works uh, for that aspect of the anime. There's some other styles, um, this very strange thing where uh, these characters have these sort of puppet faces or muppet faces, uh, if you want to, you know, whatever you want, terminology you want to use there. And even with Picardy and Tekko, they have these very um, confused, strange looks. All the characters pretty much do. And so um, I don't know what they're going for there, just a change of pace sort of thing, I guess. But it is very charming, it's very cute, but I can understand why people aren't really into that kind of stuff there. Another big issue I have with this anime is um, the character types. Uh, Picardi, uh, she is mostly a, um, 
an adult sort of character. Like she's so happy, she's so um, like not in tuned with life that she um, is charming within itself. That's very annoying sometimes. Even Hikari, it translates to shining lights, and you know she's the shining light for Teko. So that's pretty annoying uh, there because you know I, those characters don't really exist in real life. You know those kind of people in real life who are just happy, uh, don't have a care in the world, who aren't really. Um, responsible in their lives, they don't really are. They aren't really successful in life. They don't really have a lot of friends as well. Um, no offense if you are that kind of person. I'm just saying, you know, just that kind of trope in anime doesn't really uh, translate to real life. And you also have these two brother sister characters, I and Makoto. Their dynamic it's a bit tired. You know, just the Sundere sister uh, that beats on her brother, and you know, it, it's funny at times, but even. Um, moments with I where she does show real character moments, especially the. The episode where uh, she goes out with um, Teko and Picardi uh, out just shopping, basically, you really get this sense of her character depth and really big character moments for her that I really wanted more of, other than the Sunday character that they kept showing. Um, but still, there's a lot of positives since the anime. You know, it does have this Yashi K feel for it. It really does work well within the genre of having this relaxed feel. You can just sit back and relax watching these characters interact. And even the friends, the friends episode where uh, Te Teko's friends do come in, um, hang out with Picari and all that stuff. There, I really like that episode. Uh, really illustrating, you know, more of the power of technology and stuff. Um, they are just really adapting to a modern audience. I really like that um, aspect of the anime. And, you know, it's not really the perfect anime, but it's not a terrible anime as well. It really works well um, at times, especially the diving aspects as well. You, you do learn about diving because I always think that if you're introducing these concepts like diving, camping as well, laid back camp, you know, it does help to sort of teach the audience a little bit the basics of why these things are appealing uh, towards people and does a decent job at that. And so for rating for this anime, I'm going to give this one a B minus. Uh, the opening thing is really good by Mayo Sakamoto, Million Clouds, and her insert song, uh, Roma Shaka. Uh, those are very good, especially the opening theme. It really does uh, lead in towards the tone of this anime and um, especially the pacing, the editing of that uh, opening is very good. And even the animation style, I thought it was really good for the diving, at least. Uh, the puppet faces are a bit much. Uh, I do think they're charming, but again, I understand if you're not a fan of that. So you just look up clips or images of what I'm talking about so you can understand uh, what I'm talking about there. But again, um, some negatives with character types and character moments, but I think overall the characters are charming enough and the comedy is decent enough to get you through uh, Manchu. I'm very excited for season two to see how they develop the characters even more. Some new characters look like they're going to be introduced, and so I'm very excited to see how the characters progress uh, in season two. And so what did you think about Manchu? What are your thoughts in the comment section down below? Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe as well. Make sure you hit that notification bell uh, when you subscribe as also because I get notifications uh, whenever I post videos on this channel. Thank you for watching my anime review for Manchu. Have a nice day. Bye bye.